As part of this month's HubSpot product updates, or as we like to call them, updates, I'm going to walk you through how to configure workflows from the lead settings. And so this is part of the lead object that HubSpot released a few months ago. It's available to Sales Hub Pro and enterprise users, and you need to use or you need to have a sales seat. Now, before I jump into the workflows and the automation piece, I want to actually just quickly cover what the lead object is all about. So if you're already familiar, you can just skip over to the next chapter. Um, but if not, the lead object in HubSpot is part of the prospecting workspace, and it's a tool for salespeople to easily manage the process of engaging a prospect and qualifying them to a new opportunity. So this is what the prospecting workspace looks like. Um, and it is not, the leads object is not equivalent to what you see in Salesforce. In Salesforce, they treat the leads object as how you load a contact in the CRM before you want them to be a contact. Um, but with HubSpot, it's a little different. So what we always say as part of our strategy process is um, when you're setting up your pipeline stages, if there are any actions in a stage that should be skipped, it should not be a deal stage. It's actually just a step within the stage. Um, so for example, if you're sending out 10 different outreaches and that's a pipeline stage, it creates an unrealistic view of the sales process. The goal really is to reduce the amount of stages that you have to show in the macro aspects of the sales process. If something is an opportunity, you shouldn't put that into your deal pipeline straight away because it inflates your initial stages of your pipeline and it makes your conversion rates look poor throughout the funnel. To get better reporting, you need to have fewer deal stages and only bring deals into your pipeline when they become a deal or an actual opportunity, not before. And so before the prospecting tool, all of this was achieved um, through lifecycle stages and lead status. But now this prospecting workspace gives an area for your salespeople to focus on their day-to-day -day activities. It offers the task overview um, piece, looks at what your sequences and enrollment's all about. It gives some insight into your calendar. And if you have a meeting with a contact, it can then pull up their contact record, looks at your um, prospects, if it's new, attempting or connected. Um, and so again, it's that, that single interface um, to improve product productivity and give a home base. Now jumping over to the leads tab here, there's two ways a lead can be imported. Um, you can add a lead as normal and search for them or through their contact or through the company, or you can do actions, pull in leads and some set up some basic automation. Um, in this case, when a contact lifecycle stage reaches marketing qualified lead, we want a lead object to be, or we want a lead to be automatically created within um, this interface. Um, sometimes a sales rep will do outreach to a company before they even have a contact at that company inside HubSpot. And so the prospecting tool allows you to create a company as a lead. And once you find out who that decision maker is or who that contact is, you can then go in and add the contact. So here, Talent Prime is a great example of a company, um, but we don't sorry, yeah, of the company, but we don't have a contact associated to it. In the other case here, Tamara, we know that Tamara is the decision maker um, and we just need to add in that company. You can set the lead name, classify if the label as hot, warm, or cold. Um, set the stage, so new, attempting, connected, qualified, disqualified. Um, view the last activity and schedule the next activity and figure out if it's a new business, upsell, or reattempting. Um, you can filter by target accounts. You can look at their sequence enrollments. Again, it's that sort of single um, limited view and that home base. So now over to the automations piece um, of this HubSpot update. So if we jump into settings and then we'll scroll down to um, objects, leads. We'll go over to pipeline and then here you can see what your um, pipeline stage is all about. You can figure them according to what your business is. This is just HubSpot standard ones. Um, I've sort of set this that if a lead is moved to qualified, we need to have a deal created. Um, and I'll show what that looks like in the automation stages. 
So you can do a lot of automation um, with lead object. First off, you can create lists of leads, um, but in terms of automations, you can do it directly from your settings, which is neat. So I've created two um, sort of basic automations. The first one is if a lead reaches um, is determined to be disqualified, then we're going to update their qualification status on the company record, um, also perhaps the contact record, um, to be qualified out so that everything is standardized and your rep is only needing to update it once um, in that single workspace. The next automation that I've built is when a lead reaches qualified, we're going to um, create a deal. So that's where that deal needs to be created. So we've set up the automation so that um, the, that starting the building blocks of that deal are being built. We're going to assign it to the existing owner of the lead. Um, and the deal name is going to be the primary object, so the company name. And then they can go in and edit this um, themselves. We're going to set an automatic close date as to what the sale sequence is. Um, you don't need to. I've just done that. And then that way, or sorry, not the sale sequence, um, what the sales cycle is. You don't need to do that, but just in case. Um, and you can go in and edit it again. So those are two basic um, pieces of uh, automation that you can do directly from lead settings. If you have any questions, um, give us a shout. Um, and if not, hope you find this useful.